welcome back. What did I tell y'all yesterday? What did I tell y'all about my colors? Now, I didn't see it playing out the way that it did, but what did I tell y'all about patience, patience, and patience with capital letters? I said they were patient with the count. He can get erratic at times, and they would be able to be able to get some runs off of him. Not only did they do that, but they bombed him out of there early, bro. Early as hell, man. Um, go ahead, like, and subscribe if you like the content. Click the notification bell. We're going to get right into the recap of Game 3 of the World Series. Phillies went up 2-1 in just what was one of the most epic beatdowns that we've ever seen in the World Series game. First inning, Ranger Suarez comes out. Cool, calm, collected. Does his thing. He just looked like he had ice water in his veins. I was very impressed and proud of what he was able to do in stabilizing this starting lineup because Wheeler and Nola got hit around, and then Suarez comes in and handles business. And then in the bottom of the first, again, like I said, you know, you have Lance McCullers coming out with that nasty break and stuff. Kyle Schwarber works a 3 2 walk, gets on base. Reese Hoskins doesn't get on base, but he's disciplined like I wanted to see him. And I mentioned he had to be disciplined, and he was. JT goes out there, fights off a lot of pitches, and then hits a pop fly. And then with two outs, Bryce Harper comes up to the dish. Barely gets into the batter's box before he gets a first pitch hanging curveball. And what do you think he does to that? He deposits it into the stands. One swing, boom, two nothing. They were shell-shocked over there, man. They were freaking shell-shocked over there. They did not see that coming. Two nothing before you can even blink your eyes. And then you have to deal with that trying to play catch-up for the rest of the game from that point on. And they weren't up to the task because Ranger Suarez came out, and especially against Jordan Alvarez, who was one of the best hitters in baseball, not just the American League, but in baseball, a lefty with power and a guy that hits for average. He was able to keep him silent. So I was very impressed with what he was able to do. And then you come um, back to the second the, the second inning. Now, when Bryce Harper came back in there after that home run, and mind you, he came back to the plate and said, yo, this is my house once again, because it is. <laughs> he went over to the dugout, and he pulled Bone to the side, and he was whispering something to him. We don't know what he was saying. There was a lot of speculation during the game. But Bohm comes out in the second inning, and the first pitch gets a sinker to the inside. And he turns when it takes the left field line drive home run. Boom, 3 nothing. And then Brandon Marsh comes up uh, later and hits a, a solo homer on a 2 nothing slider. And then boom, 4 nothing. I did not foresee that happening the way it did. But, again, they were very... They were either very patient in their counts or they were looking for one pitch and they just turned on it. And some something that was thrown out in that game was that Lance McCullers, he hadn't thrown many fastballs to left-handers throughout the playoffs. We obviously know he's a breaking ball pitcher, but he had not thrown a lot of fastballs to left-handed hitters in the playoffs. So... And we'll get into the whole tipping pitches and whatnot later in, in this video. But it's suffice it to say, Schwarber and Bryce Harper probably sitting off speed. So it's not really that far-fetched to guess that Bryce Harper, whether he saw a tip of the pitch or not, he was sitting on a breaking pitch. Slider, curveball, don't matter. He was sitting, breaking pitch, first, first pitch, and he got it. All right, so 4 nothing just like that. And then in the fifth inning, just after McCullers, he was settling in. In that third and fourth inning, he had like one inning with back-to-back -back strikeouts. He was starting to kind of settle in a little bit. And then Kyle Schwarber, 1-2 in the count. He got a changeup that was slightly down in the zone, and he took it 443, 443 feet to dead center. Bounced off the trees. And then five pitches later, Reese Hoskins, again, like I said, he was – more patient in his, his approach. He got a slider and he turned on it. Back-to-back -back home runs and then all of a sudden it's 7 nothing. And it, I don't know what Dusty Baker was doing in the dugout. I don't know if he was sleeping. I don't know if he was taking a nap. I don't know if he was talking to Kyle Tucker and they were sharing another laugh or whatever like they were in game two. But he obviously left him in 
way longer than he should have. Now, I know they're trying to save the bullpen. That would be my thought process. So they figured, hey, if you can settle in, maybe give us some more innings, that would be cool. But once they once we went up 5 nothing, I was kind of thinking to myself, I, it looks like they're conceding the game. So they'll just let McCullers go out and, and pitch another inning or two. After the after the fourth for the fifth, because they're like, so sure, we ain't gonna win this anyway. So, no use in wearing out our bullpen trying to get back into a game that's gonna be very tough to get back into. Either way, they they left McCullers in way longer than he should have. I mean, to the point where he was going through the lineup a third time, and you see a pitcher three times, uh, well, two times. By the time you come up for that third at bat. If you already don't even know what he's pitching, then you you definitely do at that point. Let alone to the point where it looked like the Phillies already had an idea of what was coming their way from the first inning. So by the time you see him for a third time, he's way past due to be taken out that game. You left him in the oven, he was overcooked, man. Get him out of there. <laughs> so they, they lit him up. They lit him up. So my approach to this was be patient. Wait for him to get into those 2-0, counts, like I mentioned in the last video. And then look for a pitch to jump on. Or you could take their route and go after the first pitch if you know you're going to be sitting on all speed if you're a lefty. And especially if he, he might be tipping pitches. Now, that was what everybody was saying all yesterday. Oh, he... He was he had some tell signs, so they could tell whether it was going to be a, a sinker or whether it was going to be a breaking pitch. And some of I know Pedro Martinez, he mentioned that the height at which he brought his glove up to was a tell sign as to whether it was going to be gas or off speed. Uh, the how high he brought his uh, plant foot up before delivering the pitch was also a possible tell as to what type of pitch he was throwing. And I'm, I'm surprised that nobody noticed this before. McCullers and I think their pitching coach, they came out after the game and he said, it wasn't that, I just got beat. I didn't think I, I, I had anything that was giving away what I was throwing. But, I mean, what is he supposed to say? I mean, he's, he's a great pitcher, he's prideful. But, you know, it seemed kind of obvious that he was doing certain things that were giving away what his pitch selection was going to be to the Phillies uh, hitters because you don't just pull look you when guys come back from an at bat whether you succeeded or failed or whatnot you good teammates and and high level teams they talk to the next batter or talk to the guy in the on deck circle and say hey I saw the heater it's kind of flat or it has movement or he's throwing them high or he's a little wild or the slider has a lot of break on it watch out on a on a o2 count you know all these little nuances that you you talk about with your teammates so they have an idea of what to look for when they go up there but for Bohm to be that locked in after Bryce Harper was talking to him I mean first pitch without a doubt he's like boom I'm on this and to be on a sinker that is breaking in hard on your hands low that's that's a pitch that you either are able to paint the inside corner or you take that pitch for a ball or you swing through it. You, it's, it's, that's a very tough pitch to turn on and be, to be able to guess it perfectly. So I think there's more to that. Now, Astros co-pitching co coach Joshua Miller, he kind of echoed what McCuller said. And he said, we didn't really identify anything specific today, I guess, from maybe when he looked back at the tape or at the tablet or whatnot. He said, it's something we always monitor and look into. But uh, I don't know. To me... I noticed the difference in the, the leg kick and definitely where he was holding his glove at during his delivery. So I, I, I'm just surprised that the Mariners and the Yankees did not pick up on that. Nonetheless, like I said before, through his first two postseason starts, he had only thrown one fastball <laughs> to opposing left-handed hitters. So if you're Schwarber, who hit a bomb off him as well, right? He hit, he hit a bomb off that changeup. And then Bryce Harper hit a bomb off of, you guessed it, another off-speed pitch, that knuckle curveball. They're just sitting on the off-speed pitches. So that was very... I did not know that going into the game, but, man, they made him pay. They tattooed him. He's the first 
pitcher in history to give up five home runs in a World Series game, if I'm not mistaken. And it was one of those type of games. Once it started raining, it poured. I did, there's just really nothing they could do about that. And look, I don't feel bad for them. It's not my team. We did what we needed to do. And Philly at home, 6-0 in the postseason this year. At home. I mean, we're undefeated. We are we are a tough place to play in, man. A tough place to play in. Capacity <laughs> capacity was 43,651 and attendance was estimated at 45,712. So look, we out here. Uh one of my buddies was telling me that Penn State has uh a station or, or two that have seismographs and we registered a a low a low rating on the Richter scale every time Bryce Harper came up the bat. That just lets you know how loud it was in that house. Yeah, that's cool. You know, the, the Astros fans, they, they come out and they're doing their thing. That's cool. But when you come to Philly, you were come you were stepping into the lion's den. I don't think teams really realize how real it is until you step into this place in a situation like the playoffs or the World Series. It's a different beast similar to the way the link is or even like arrowhead stadium when you go out and play the chiefs there is little to do out there besides eating barbecue so when the chiefs play especially when they're good like they are with Mahomes, and you go into arrowhead and they jump up on you seven nothing or 14 nothing that place has to be one of the loudest places on earth and same thing with cbp Last night, I mean, I could feel it through the TV, just the intensity. You know, everybody just, the excitement which is bubbling over through the screen. So it's just, it, it was just crazy. And let, let's get into some little fun facts and, and tidbits. <laughs> From the first pitch, um, you heard when Altuve went out there leading off, they said, cheater, cheater, crazy. And then... Martin Maldonado went out, you know, he had the, the 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 bat controversy. He wanted to use the same model bat as Albert Pujols has used during his whole career. And they dinged him for it, I guess, earlier this year. He had to use a new bat. And so people were yelling, check the bat, check the bat. I mean, they're just on them, man. They're just on them. Oh, how did I forget? Nick, Nick Castellanos came out and set the tone because Altuve hits a, a blooper. He tries to ambush Suarez on the first pitch. His is a bloop to right field. And Nick Castellanos makes damn near the same sliding catch that he made in game one. The game-saving sliding catch. He comes out and makes it again. He makes it. The first one in game one was against Jeremy Pena. And this one in game three was against Atuve. And it set the tone. And then we came out in that first, at the bottom of the first and just jacked them up, man. So all in all, great game. Let me know what you guys think of, of, of this game, where we're at right now, 2-1. And what you think is going to happen in game four. And I'm going to give you my prediction right now. So the the um, the matchup right now is Aaron Nola getting his second start against the Astros versus Christian Javier. This is another intriguing one. They, they just have their whole starting lineup of pitchers is just they have an embarrassment of riches. And this this matchup particularly concerns me for a few reasons. So you look at Christian Javier, had a really good year this year, 11-9, 2.54 ERA, very low ERA, top five, I think. Oh, no, no, 12, 12 in the MLB at uh, 2.54, tied for 14th in strikeouts with 194 strikeouts and has a sub one whip at .95. Really, really sharp pitcher. Great heat on his fastball, a really disgusting slider. One of the best sliders in the game. I mean, I just said that McCullers has one of the best sliders in the game, and Javier is right there. I mean, he might, honestly, Javier might be the best pitcher in their lineup. Low key. If you look at what he likes to do, he likes to come up high with that fastball. He'll come up three inches off the top of the zone, pump that heater up high, and he gets a lot of swings and misses. I think he has, he's top five in swings and misses on fastballs at least three inches up out of the zone. So he's going to work that fastball high, and then he's going to hit you with that slider, whether you're lefty or righty. He's going to hit you with that slider, 
it covers the plate for a majority of the flight path of the pitch and it breaks off towards the edge of the plate right near the end so it's a really really nasty pitch and he's 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 really sharp so i'm looking at some of these next gen stats and something that's interesting to me he has a very very high strikeout rate even though he has for 3 0 counts um he he's above the league average so he gets into 3 0 counts 5.5 percent of the people he faces and the mlb average is 4.4 percent however he has a high uh amount of strikeouts so that that lets me know that yeah he might be throwing maybe those are all piece maybe he pitches backwards sometimes maybe he misses on the first pitch but oh yeah yeah first pitch strike he he throws 55.7 percent of the time when the league average is 60.7 percent so he he can whether that's a breaking pitch or whether that's just him being a little bit inaccurate with the high with the fastball or maybe he throws it up high and they don't go for it he can work his way back into counts and he has a high rate of fly ball outs. He doesn't have he's below league average, I believe, in ground ball outs, but he is above the league average. He has a high uh, percentage of fly ball outs. So he'll he'll throw that that high fastball and guys can't get on top of it. They'll get under it, and I think that's why you see a lot of these pop fly outs. He'll work I, I would assume he works his way back into counts. And he just, he's a dog, right? So this guy is the real deal going against this lineup. And then the second thing that concerns me about this matchup is the fact that none of our guys have seen him. Kyle Schwarber has seen him two times in his career. And Brandon Marsh has seen him seven times in his career. But everybody else, this is the first time. So there's a level of uncertainty I think it's going to take them a few times through the lineup to even get a bearing for what this guy's even like. So, I don't like that. They've seen Nola. He just faced him. We've never seen Javier. Uh, Javier. So, for those reasons, I think that the Astros, unfortunately, are going to bounce back and win this game tonight. That's just my feeling. Hopefully, I'm wrong. But I believe that the Astros are going to bounce back. Be patient, patient against Nola, and I don't know if they put up a lot of runs against Nola, but I think that they'll get to Nola maybe one or two runs sooner than we'll be able to get to Javier if we get to him. The only the only thing that we can really do against Javier is be patient, make him throw strikes. You cannot chase the heater high or the junk on the black of the plate on the edge. You can't do that, or you're just going to be lost against this guy for however many innings he decides to pitch tonight. You have to be even more disciplined against this guy than you do against McCullers. So my prediction is the Astros win tonight, and it's 2-2. And then you go back to, I believe, Verlander in Game 5 versus... Oh, tonight is Noah Syndergaard, excuse me. Tonight is Noah Syndergaard. Either way, um, it's it's going to be a a tough go against against this team tonight with Javier on the mound. So let me know what, what know what you guys think. Um, let me go back and double check who's starting tonight, just so I can make sure I'm giving you guys the right information. Oh no no, excuse me, my bad. It is it is Nola tonight. So probable pitcher Aaron Nola versus Javier. So. We're going to see. Either way, it's a tough matchup for these Phillies. Um, I think it'll be easier to get to our pitching tonight than it will be to get to Javier. So even though I, I like Nola more than Syndergaard, Javier, the fact that we haven't seen him before leads me to give them the edge in tonight's game. So let me know what you guys think, and um, I'll be back at you tomorrow with another video uh, for game five and we're going to talk about it till next time peace